There comes a time when all wild babies feel the need to step away from the confines of the nursery, to stretch their legs and overcome the restrictions of their environment. Whether this means simply learning to stand on one's own feet, or coming to grips with new experiences. From the moment wild babies learn to walk, they are all raring to go. The baby elephants in this herd have not yet experienced the ferocity of an African storm. It has been a long, dry winter, so the arrival of the wet season is frightening. But the rains are welcomed. Up till now, the pools and rivers have been dry, so this wetness is sweet relief. Some babies have never experienced so much water. And this little guy is about to get his feet wet for the very first time. He follows the example and dives in. At this age, his trunk only knows about breathing and makes a perfect snorkel. Drinking requires diving under. The calf just can't get enough of this wonderful cool substance. But there are others who also need the water. Alone, he would be at great risk and instinctively is a touch uneasy. But the lions are also thirsty and under the scrutiny of the bull, they take their chances and drink. He's keeping himself between the lions and the calves. The elephants are annoyed at having their bathing disturbed. The lions aren't that happy either. A call from the matriarch and the herd knows it's time to leave. And in typical elephant fashion, they form a protective shield around the youngster. who just can't hold on for any longer. Job done, the herd is on the move once again. This baby elephant has not only met water for the first time, but has also come face to face with an elephant calf's number one enemy. Now for a real groundbreaking experience. A dust bath. Which is another first for this little elephant. another use for the 100,000 muscles in his little trunk. One advantage of being small, 
there's always a shady spot. And there's always the extended family of relatives to keep our young elephants safe. Although rearing to go, he is always under the vigilant care of the adults. Here's an adult who will never get to see her young. This Nile monitor is looking for a place to deposit her belly full of eggs. A hundred days later, it's midsummer and the signs of breaking ground. The baby monitor lizard claws its way out of an old termite nest. The nest will attract many predators, and instinctively, the little lizard moves away. Instinct tells him to head to water. But not to drink, to hide in. He's not the only reptile that likes water. Even at this young age, the little lizard can sense danger. It's a lizard thing. The forest cobra has spotted the little Nile monitor and silently approaches. The lizard can smell the danger, just not sure of the direction. At this age, the hatchling senses are not what they should be. Confused, he turns. into the waiting embrace of the forest cobra and is injected with a deadly venom. The nest has also attracted a legavon. The poison works fast and the cobra doesn't waste any time. The tough skin of the monitor hatchling doesn't bother the snake who positions the lizard head first for faster, smoother consumption. Soon, the little lizard is just a sad tale. The Legavon is the only reptile besides the snake to have a forked tongue, just the thing to smell out eggs. Inherently low on endurance, the Nile monitors need to rest often, and their exit is slow going. The Legavon eases its way towards the feast, unconcerned by the close reptilian family ties between him and his intended prey. The baby monitor picks up the scent of danger. There's only one thing to do to escape the hungry lizard. Retreat. His sibling isn't so lucky. Somehow he must get past the giant or die. It was much safer in the egg, lots of food and no danger. Trouble is, he just doesn't fit anymore. The Legavon has an insatiable appetite, and this little monitor knows the nest is not the safest place to be. 
while one baby tries not to be noticed. The other makes his move, attracting the Legavan's attention. And while the big guy's distracted, he makes his getaway. The Legavan's not concerned, thoughts more where that little guy came from. This monitor is banking on the safety of the egg. Unless, of course, it happens to be the egg that's chosen for dessert. The Legavan has had his fill. He knows it's the season of plenty. He'll be back to the riverbank for more. The coast is clear. Time to go. His first instinct is to head for the water. This is a Nile monitor's habitat of choice, and here in the safety of the water, he can finally stretch his legs. Out of the 30 to 60 hatchlings in a typical clutch, at least a third will be eaten before reaching the water. Much further north, a herd of thirsty zebra and their young foals are also trying desperately to reach the water. One young foal is struggling. She is lame, caused by an infection. It's unlikely that she will survive, but her will to live is strong, and she's intent on making it to a waterhole and avoiding any predators. Water is scarce, and the animals congregate at the last remaining waterhole. The zebra are no exception. The quest for water even outweighs the threat from their mortal enemy. The lame foal is eager to quench her thirst. The others are already there. Finally, she makes it to the water's edge. The young lion has not yet noticed the lame zebra. The foal's mother is nervous. She nudges her offspring to start moving. The young zebra has only just wet her lips. The mother is anxious to go, and the foal has no option but to follow. The rest of the herd have had enough. And prompted by a bit of captivity, decide to move on. On a list of zebra priorities, death by lion is definitely less desirable than death by thirst.
charge by the lethargic lion gets the herd moving. If the big cat had spotted the lame zebra, he would certainly have targeted her. Safe for now, the little foal hobbles on. And once again, the herd moves on to the hot desert plains. The foal desperately trying to keep up. And although weak and struggling with the pace, the desire to be healthy has not deserted her. But she has gone as far as she can, despite unwavering encouragement from her mum. Regardless of the heat, the female zebra refuses to leave her foal. She stands guard, stubbornly waiting for her foal to get up and resume their journey. Like any mother, she will not accept the inevitable. With a final effort, it's all over. For the rest of the herd and all their foals, life goes on and she is soon forgotten. Perhaps by all, except her mother. Some animals need the water for more than just drinking. But even hippos sometimes need to leave the safety of the water. And now is the time to lead their young calves onto the riverbanks for the first time. But first, they need to make sure the path is clear of any unwanted sharp-toothed visitors. The young hippo calves wait patiently in the nursery. The calf is naturally aggressive and decides to chase them away himself. The hippopotamus doesn't have the reputation of Africa's most dangerous animal for nothing. And when there is young involved, it is understandably protective and reacts aggressively. And a charging hippo is warning enough. Hippos and crocs have a strange relationship, often tolerating the other's presence. It's been known for mothers to place their calves next to a group of crocs for protection while she goes off to graze. But crocs do sometimes take advantage. It's time for the hippo mothers to lead their young from the river and show them off to the rest of the herd. She's a touch overprotective and issues a warning to the hippos and crocs between her calf and the land. She has reason to be grumpy. Her calf had an encounter with a croc right after birth. In the water, he is fine. But now, coming onto land for the first time, he's struggling and could be targeted. The hopeful mom keeps urging the calf to walk, as if this will make him stronger. 
three legs not coping with a weight designed for four. This stronger baby is feeling adventurous and comes ashore to explore. Here comes one and a half tons of, well, mostly muscle. And if it's not mum, it's really scary. There are a lot of strange looking creatures from a hippo calf's point of view. Life away from mum's side can be a touch frightening. While most are enjoying their day on the beach, the injured calf is still struggling. He would rather be in the water, the weight off his legs. The stronger hippo is also finding life on dry land a little scary. Nothing like a sore tooth for a bad temper. His first day at play has proved not as much fun as expected. She decides he's better off in the water, and he's more than willing to follow. The weight off his little legs, and he's more mobile. And much happier. He feels like a real hippo again. His joy is infectious, and even his grumpy mother seems to touch on the jubilant side. It will take a while for his injured leg to heal, but so long as he has mum to look after him, the hippo calf will enjoy a normal life. But until then, he is content to bask in the comfort of mum's ample bulk. These four-month-old leopard cubs still stay close to their mother for support, but this doesn't stop them from exploring the many exciting features their immediate territory offers. Mom keeps an eye on them. She gives them the freedom this age of discovery demands. They are compatible, close, and each draws on the other for support and affection. They will soon have to separate and go off on their own. Each new sound signifies a new adventure. Something that needs investigating. The noise above cannot be ignored for much longer. The little male decides he's the man for the job.
crazy hornbills are high in the tree. He's not put off. His climbing technique has improved with age. The hornbill is as curious as the little cub. but knows it's time to leave. Turning around won't be easy. No going back. Must press forward. This is a no-win situation. Can't go back, can't go forward. Only one direction left. Down. He has to reclaim his dignity. Time to stalk his sister. She will not be taken by surprise. He's a leopard, master hunter, inventor of the perfect stalk. She's a leopard, famous for her stealth, and a master of surprise. She's a mum, and in charge. When she calls, her cubs come. He's still a little embarrassed by the hornbill fiasco. After a day of important discoveries, it's always good to have mum to play with. And even the failed hornbill hunter can't resist joining in. Bird Island on the west coast of Africa is home to thousands of the Atlantic Ocean seabirds. A storm has ravaged the island, and the resident Cape Cormorant colony has felt the brunt of the storm's anger. It's breeding season, and the chicks are hungry and cold. They are waiting for Dad to return from his fishing expedition to feed them. The female stays with the chicks until he returns. They need her downy feathers to keep warm. Also resident on the island are a colony of seagulls. They too have felt the effects of the storm. Some have been left homeless and have to defend themselves. Cape cormorants are the only seabirds that do not secrete oil and rely on other ways to keep warm. They generate energy by a throat wobble action and in extremely cold weather, they will shake uncontrollably to keep warm. Hunger will lower body temperature and cause an increase in the shaking. 
but will only last as long as the chick has the energy to continue. Seagulls are governed by a whole different set of rules. The seagull chicks are by nature more aggressive than the cormorant youngsters and will take whatever measures necessary to stay alive. Sometimes with a little help from mum. Seagull chicks are survivors and will fight to the end. The residents on Bird Island have their own ways to survive, and although very different, the chicks have one thing in common. They are all rearing to grow. Unlike the chicks on Bird Island, this baby Nile monitor is all by himself. He's been out of the egg for almost five weeks and must now find something to eat. This is his first hunting attempt and he has no idea what he can eat or what tastes good. And more importantly, what's easily attainable. A worm looks tasty and slow enough to catch. Important to wait for just the right moment. Before going for gold. Given the slip, but undeterred. Perhaps a bit al dente. Pasta is not meant to fight back. And it doesn't go down so well. Perhaps earthworms are not meant for Nile monitors after all. His sharp reptilian eyes spot another likely candidate, a dung beetle. He uses his Jacobson's organ, a reptile's onboard sensor that transmits all the surrounding smells to his brain, to check out the menu. It smells all right. Time for breakfast. but it proves to be a tough nut to crack. This looks more like it, something green, but it's fast. His hunger drives him forward. Hunting presents a bit more of a challenge than anticipated. At last, a bite of something decent. Now to get it past the jaws and into the stomach. Finally, head first, the grasshopper becomes the Nile Monitor's first real outdoor meal.
And with the arrogance of a successful hunter, it's time to progress to level two. In water. And plenty to choose from. This is his hunting ground of choice. And he's fast. A chance encounter turns into a successful catch, and he's more surprised than the fish. Now to get it to shore, before it becomes the one that got away. Having cut his teeth on a grasshopper, the fish slips down a lot easier. The little Nile monitor has not only survived the first days out of the egg, he has successfully caught and eaten his first meal without any help. Now the world is his oyster. And soon, he will be all grown up. These hyena cubs have no idea how to find, let alone catch, their own food. They wait patiently for mum to return so that they can suckle. She left the night before to forage and is due back any time. As the sun gets higher, the pups become agitated. Hunger and loneliness have long been forgotten. Some unwelcome neighbors are moving in. A pride of lions, hyena's biggest enemy, and the pups' greatest danger. Pups huddle together quietly, and just when they think all is lost, Mum appears. She can smell the lions. After a quick greeting, she leads them away needing to get a good distance from the lions. She must lead them quietly to a new safe den, before the pride of lions catch scent of them. The cubs have gotten used to their new dwelling. And at this age, they like to chew and pull at anything they can find. It's good training for when they have a real carcass to tear apart. It's also a good practice for jaws that will grow into the most powerful bone-crushing tools in the animal kingdom. But jaws alone are not enough.
A hyena also needs a strong neck to be able to tear flesh and bone apart, and tugging and pulling at branches is vital in developing these strong muscles. An older adolescent shows that what is one hyena's dung is another's treasure. This teenager has found the real thing. And it's worth fighting for. Mom has secured a meal-sized rack of ribs to take back to her hungry pups. The pops aren't the only ones licking their lips. She needs to secure her bounty before they gang up and take it from her. But she's a wily old girl and has the perfect hiding place. Underwater, where the smell won't give it away. She needs to know she's not being followed back to the den especially by him, enemy number one. A younger female seems to be able to smell underwater. And she's off again. Nearby, the pups wait anxiously for her return, and dinner. She knows she can't go straight to the den, leading her enemies to her pups. There's no love lost between her and the others. They will stop at nothing to secure her meat. He too would take the meat and the pups if given the chance. The lion is hungry and eases in. They are distracted and haven't noticed the intruder. The lion charges and while she is distracted, the younger female steals the meat from under her nose. The pups scatter for cover. And the lion can only watch as his would-be meal disappears. She is younger and stronger than the pup's mum. And there's not a whole lot she can do. Although disappointed and hungry, the hyena's cubs have learned an important lesson. They must always be wary. Even their own kind are opportunists and will take advantage if given the chance. A herd of strange looking animals are taking advantage of the hippo's beach. It doesn't happen often that hippos come face to face with animals bigger than themselves. And he's not hanging around to measure. The dominant male issues a territorial warning. They don't look that dangerous, and the little hippo decides to take a closer look. And here's one his size too.
He is a hippopotamus, most dangerous African mammal. He doesn't scare easily. The elephants are unconcerned and content to drink under the close scrutiny of the calf and mum. As much as hippos feel at home in the water, so do vervets in the treetops. But unlike the hippo calves, vervet babies need to do a little growing up before getting too high. Before he grows up, this baby needs all the nourishment he can get. For an independent vervet requires a great deal of agility. As these youngsters demonstrate, his mother is not letting him out of her grasp. She believes her baby should crawl before he attempts to climb. And decides he'll be easier to control, closer to the ground. For the first few weeks of its life, a baby vervet will spend three quarters of the day attached firmly to its mother. Its fingers and toes may be tiny, but they can already grip tightly. Safely on the ground, he's allowed to wander and gets an encouraging tweak and cuddle from an ant. still a little unsteady on all fours. And standing upright, not possible. Nothing like a friendly pat and hug to boost his morale. Not to mention a friendly tail for support. And when an older cousin tries to take over, a slap from mum sorts him out. Back on mum's belly and safe. Some just never outgrow the baby chair phase. Why walk if you can ride? Growing up in the wild is not all fun and games. For animal babies to progress from youngsters to self-sufficient adults, they will need to face many dangers. Overcome seemingly impossible obstacles. And most importantly, all young and wild must be patient and diligent in learning the lessons of the wild. Wherever their exciting surroundings entice them to go, 